Transient osteoporosis or osteonecrosis of the hip. Transient osteoporosis of the femoral head is not an osteonecrosis of the femoral head. In transient osteoporosis, the symptoms are usually more than the X-ray findings. It usually affects pregnant women. It also affects men during the fifth decade of life. On x-ray, you probably will not find much. You may find osteopenia. The MRI is probably characteristic. You will find bony edema and increased signal intensity in T2 MRI. The signal changes will involve the femoral head and extend into the neck and maybe even the intertrochanteric area. In transient osteoporosis, there is no double density which is seen in the MRI patients with osteonecrosis. Transient osteoporosis is not a tumor. It is not an osteonecrosis, and it does not need surgery. On the other hand, osteonecrosis may be bilateral in about 80% of the patient. Check the other hip even if the patient is asymptomatic. Early diagnosis and treatment may improve the chances for success of a head-preserving surgical procedure, such as core decompression or bone grafting. In late stages of osteonecrosis, the femoral head collapses and cannot be saved. For the patient to have a good outcome, the femoral head will need to be replaced at this late stage. How do you diagnose osteonecrosis of the hip? Obtain AP and frog lateral views of the hip. The frog lateral view will show the fracture, which is called crescent sign. MRI is usually the study of choice, especially when the patient has persistent hip pain and the radiographs are negative and the diagnosis of osteonecrosis of the femoral head is suspected, especially if the patient has risk factors. On the T1 MRI, there will be a well-defined band of low signal intensity, usually within the superior anterior portion of the femoral head. Decreased signal from the ischemic marrow and there is a signal band-like area of low signal intensity, crescent sign. Crescent sign represent the reactive interface between the necrotic and the reparative zone. The single line density demarcates the normal from the ischemic bone and the double line sign will be seen in T2 images. The subcortical lesion on T2 show two lines, low signal intensity line and the high signal intensity line. The lesion will show a high signal intensity inner border with a low signal intensity peripheral rim double line. The high signal intensity represents hypervascular granulation tissue. The size of the lesion is the most important factor in determining the development of symptoms and the progression of the disease. The best prognosis occurs in a small lesion with its colorotic margins. The presence of bone marrow edema on MRI is predictive of worsening of the pain and future progression of the disease. Multifocal osteonecrosis is a disease involving three or more sites, such as the hip, the knee, the shoulder, the ankles, and it occurs in about 3% of patients. A patient that present with osteonecrosis at a site other than the hip should undergo MRI of the hip to rule out the asymptomatic lesion in the femoral head. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.